As the ongoing NSA revelations yield more information about the government's secret spying program, the man who leaked the story, Edward Snowden, has been thrust into the spotlight. However, it's important to remember that this is far from the first time someone has come forward to expose the overreach of the NSA. Before Edward Snowden, it was Thomas Drake, former senior executive. And before him, it was Bill Binney, a former intelligence official. But before Binney, the very first person to claim the title of NSA whistleblower is a man you've probably heard the least about. His name is Russell Tice, and he served 20 years within various government intelligence agencies, including the NSA. In 2005, Tice blew the whistle on the NSA engaging in unlawful and unconstitutional surveillance of American citizens. So here to tell us his story and why he thinks that Snowden's leaks are just barely scratching the surface, Russ Tice, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. What did you see that made you come out and blow the whistle initially? Well, the first thing I saw was I'm a satellite system specialist, so with the things that I was doing with satellites, I found out sort of inadvertently that uh, American citizens were being um, spied upon by our space capabilities. So that was my first uh, sort of heads up into what was going on. And I was just shocked because NSA was not supposed to do this. It was against regulation. It was against the law. It was against our Constitution. So it was sort of. Um, it was sort of a come to Jesus moment for me. <laughs> sort of a wake up call there. You've alleged that the NSA abuses go far beyond what people are even talking about right now. How far does it go, Russ? Well, it, it goes very far because initially what I saw was uh, they were targeting news organizations, they were tar targeting, targeting U.S. companies that did international business, they were charging, uh, looking at financial institutions, but they were also going after. Um, the State Department and uh, Secretary of State Colin Powell at the time, and they were going after high-ranking military generals, and that was just with my space capabilities that I saw. Now later, when I got together with colleagues, and we started to put together the terrestrial side, that's the side that is being done with all those nodes all over the country with the fiber optics and that sort of thing, then we found out that it got much worse. because, And this was just the phone that we were looking at, but it was also being done at the email level, but, but that wasn't the information I was getting. The information I was seeing were phone numbers that were being plugged into a system that was going after uh, people's phone, uh, phone numbers and associated numbers, and a lot, of, a lot of numbers I wasn't even sure, but they went after, they went after law firms and lawyers. They went after um, more generals. Uh, General Petraeus was one of the guys. It seemed like right about that three-star level was they were going after admirals and generals. They went after the Supreme Court, of which I held uh, Judge Alito's paperwork in my hand, numbers associated with Judge Alito that someone had put into the system that NSA used to spy on Judge Alito. And let's just break this down a little bit because these are explosive allegations right now that I have not heard anyone talk about before, that there are actually orders that you personally saw in your hands to wiretap Judge Alito, high-ranking intelligence officers, David Petraeus, Barack Obama. Wannabe Senator Barack Obama. At that time, he wasn't even a senator. He, he um, had won his primary in Illinois. And I think maybe the catalyst, and I don't, I'm not sure, was the fact that he had just done a big speech at the Democratic uh, Convention. Now, now I, I was at that time a lifelong Republican. I didn't even watch the Democratic Re Convention. So at the time, it, you know, the significance of it really didn't hit me until later. I mean, I did look up, well, who's this guy, Barack Obama? Well, okay, he made a speech, blah, blah, blah. But then, of course, later, things, you know, started to, you know, come into play that this is our future president of the United States. And you've also said that this is not just in their congressional offices. I mean, we're talking about home surveillance and personal. Correct. This is this would be for for a senator or a congressman. It would be personal phone numbers associated. It would be and and a lot of the times I could not tell because there, there were, a lot of the numbers were unlisted and we would go to try to 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 reverse to find out where these numbers were and we were being very careful about it because we didn't want too many people to figure out how we were doing that. But we would find that it would be associated with family members, especially wives or spouses, you know, the other direction. But it, it would be their, also, their, their district office, if it was a congressman for whatever state, they'd have two or three or four little district offices back home. So, so, so it would pervasive. be very, yes, it would be very um, I guess the next inclusive. question is, who is, who is administering the surveillance? 
That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, it looked like the, inf the, the plugging in of these phone numbers was being done in the evenings at NSA. So almost it was like being done on the sly, even so that most NSA employees did not know what was going on. Now, a high-level person at NSA told me this was being directed from the vice president office. That would be Vice President Dick Cheney. Now, I don't know that for sure, but that's what I was told from a very senior person at NSA. So a high-level Bush administration official. I guess the next question is, why? Why was it being done? I mean, I, the first thing that comes to my mind is blackmail. I don't know the answer to that either. Um, what do you think? I mean, based on your experience, Russ, well, what, what could the reason be to be wiretapping and spying on people like Obama, Judge Alito, Petraeus? I think you hit the word. Uh, you know, to me, I don't know for sure, but that would be a means of control. If you were to look and, and be able to listen to everybody's conversation for years on end, for, for a period of time, you, you could probably find out perhaps some salacious information that could be used to control that individual. Now, you know, it, if, say it's the intelligence community. I, I noticed that the intelligence community is not being hit with the sequester, the intelligence budget. Well, how is that possible? Um, is there some kind of leverage that's being placed on our three branches of government to make sure that the intelligence community is, is gets what they want? In other words, is the intelligence community run in this country, not, not our government? Um, that's and I guess that begs the question, what, is there some sort of shadow government at play I mean, are we talking about the military industrial complex here? What do you think? As an insider and through all your research and people that you've talked to, who's running the show here, Russ? Well, remember, I don't know for sure. <laughs> I, just know, I just know that a whole lot of people got wiretapped. <laughs> but if I, if I had to guess, I would say it's the, it's the, the upper echelon of the intelligence, the intelligence community that is running this show. And it um, makes me wonder, people like Dick Cheney, I mean, are they still working behind the scenes? We know that these people have been in, working behind the administration and, and behind the scenes for decades. I mean, Kissinger, all these people, they're kind of, who knows? I mean, do you think that they're still vetting people like Obama, you know, to get in the positions that he's in? Um, but you know what? Political opponents have been spying on each other for decades. So how is this different now? Well, what, what's different about this is this, this is at the Orwellian scale. This is the, the everything scale. This isn't just Richard, Richard Nixon going after a few you know, enemies list. This is everybody and everything. And now NSA, <clears throat> excuse me, NSA is literally tapping every communication, every digital communication in this country. Content, not just, not just the metadata, the content. And, w and when they're saying, well, it's not that far, once again, they are lying. They, are, they, they continue to lie about the full capability. Right. What's your response to Obama consistently saying, we are not doing that? <laughs> we, the previous president in, in April of, of uh, 2004, you know, condescendingly pointed at a camera and said, we, we only do such things with a court order. Now, now, I did not know at the time that the president was lying because I did not know how high up you know, that went. But now we know President Bush was lying you know, blatantly to right. the American people. So now, now President Obama is lying to the American people. Is it because he's being controlled? I don't know. But I certainly know when he was candidate Obama, even though I was a Republican and I heard that he wanted to stop these things and he was going to make sure that we didn't have national security letters just willy-nilly and, and, right. and, and NSA, I, I was for Obama, even though I was a conservative. Um, I can't trust anything. I mean, all these political politicians just seem like actors. I mean, I call DC Hollywood for ugly people. It's as you can't ever tell what these people really think. But I wanted to go into the media because, really, why do you think the media is in a frenzy over Snowden's allegations? Really, you came out eight years ago and said almost the same thing except on a smaller scale, Russ, and really you've been censored. Tell us your story about trying to get this information out as well. Well, I mean, as I, I, I was trying to get the news out and I was trying to, with, with Snowden coming out, I figured now was the time to try to right. tell the rest of the story because I've been holding on to this for a long time. And I, when I went on Keith Urban's show four and a half years ago, I decided I was going to tell the media that NSA was going after journalists and news organizations, and there seemed to be no interest whatsoever from the media that I was telling 
that NSA was going after you. So they either considered me a liar or they considered me, you know, NSA's, you know, oh, this guy must be crazy, or there must be some other interest that was making sure the media was not covering this. Now, I don't know what that is, but I know that it was got, not getting much coverage. So I figured with the Snowden thing, and the difference with Snowden is he has tangible evidence. Mm -hmm. He has paper. Mm -hmm. Now, because he has paper and it has classifications, they are, they are after him because he has the tangible proof of what I've said in the past. It's easy to dismiss me when it's my words, and you just say, well, that guy's a lying or crazy liar. But now we have the proof that what I've said in the past is true. And they want Snowden bad because he's now codified the truth of what is going on with the National Security Agency. You've said that we are living in a police state right now. Why? Well, I, I sort of consider this sort of a, a, a light police state because they're, they're hiding the fact that it's a police state. I mean, the fact that they can literally go into all of our communications, all our digital communications, uh, the fact that you know, it's been disclosed recently that the, the post office is now doing a cover on every tangible letter that goes to the post office. They're taking a picture of everything. They're looking at the, the return address, and they're looking at the, the, the main address of who's mailing something. And, and that is also being digitally stored. So every means of communication in this country, everything is being watched by, by the federal government. And that is Orwellian, and that is a trademark of a police state. Thank you so much. We're going to have to wrap it up now. A lot more to be said. Russ, I'm glad you're in town. I'll have to get you on again soon. Russ Tice, original NSA whistleblower. Thank you.